I have a paper that's coming out in a journal called Risk Analysis on this. Of all the work I've done since 9-11, I think this is the most complicated issue. It's also the kind of most complicated mathematical model I've developed, but it, I think it's just extremely, almost in the too hard category, to be honest. And um, it's not clear to me that, uh, I, I think it would be risky for the Obama administration to kind of take on immigration and the borders early on because he'd have to use a lot of political capital. It would be highly risky even if he got everyone on board to actually achieve what he's trying to do would be difficult and given that we have two wars and in a failing economy, it, it just doesn't seem uh, the, the right place to go. Um, but what needs to be done in my view is uh, to bring all of the legal workers who are all of the people who are coming in here, there, there are a lot of jobs here that uh, U.S. workers don't want, or at least this was true before, you know, the last few months. And um, if you can bring people in legally, bring them in above board, then there'll be really very little or no reason for people to be sneak, sneaking across the board. It would be a lot easier to catch people sneaking across the border because there'll be many fewer people trying to sneak across the border. And so I think the first thing is to really get a system in place like that, and then you can strengthen the, the border patrol and detention beds, which was a big issue in my analysis, that there's really a two-step process to keep people out of the country. One is to catch them at the border. The other one is to de detain them until you can remove them. And historically, uh, until the last year or two, they've had a lot of border patrol, but then it would just be catch and release. So they kind of get the photo op of catching the people, then they'd release them into the streets of the U.S. without actually removing them. People are pretty smart crossing the border. In fact, many of them hire these coyotes, these human smugglers, and they can really see where the defensive resources of the U.S. are. And so they c can, you know, unless you're going to build an entire wall around the waters and around the airspace and around Canada and Mexico, you're really not going to stop people from uh, sneaking into the country. And so it's a little bit like when you have ants coming into your, I mean, I don't, mean that people sneaking in are like ants, but when you have ants coming into your house, you can either, uh, you know, kind of seal up plastic or, you know, seal up the, the little cracks, which hardly ever works, or you could kind of clean the honey jar, and, um, and I think the cleaning the honey jar here makes more sense, that you have to eliminate the incentive of people sneaking illegally across the border. Again, by bringing people in legally, you would be doing that. The drug war there has really gotten out of control. There certainly is you know, kind of synergy between, uh, you know, for the drug cartel between getting drugs into the country and getting illegal people into the country. And I think, at least from what I've read, is that they will sometimes uh, sneak, try to sneak illegal aliens into the country, but do it in such a way that they know the border patrol will go after those people. So that's kind of, and then do an end run around them with the drugs, which is what they're really more interested in. So they're kind of taking the people's money and, and then a lot of those people get caught so that they can bring the drugs in a, a different route. And there certainly has been concern of whether the, the drug cartels or the human sm smugglers will, you know, take money to, from terrorists to help them into the country. As far as, I mean, there's no publicly available data that I'm aware of that says this is happening, but it's something people are thinking about.